Hi, in this video, I'm covering an example of using Bitbucket for hosting an online Git repository. So Git is a set of commands for version control or tracking changes of computer files. I like to think about this as a conceptual blend between Dropbox and Google Drive and track changes in Microsoft Word. This just applied to all of your files. So you can share with other people, but you can also see the evolution of a project or a file over time and monitor all of the changes, but also go back to all of the historic changes. Repository is a word that just refers to this online file folder that's hosted, hosted in a cloud-based platform such as GitHub or Bitbucket. We use Bitbucket because it has free unlimited private repositories if, as soon as your account is registered with a .edu email address. So this is an example repository of mine at bitbucket.org slash Ashley FV slash CHE class FA19. And this was a publicly shared repository. If we open a git bash window which i can do in a couple ways i could go to my um, window and ask, start git bash there um, alternatively i can be in a file directory and this works on a pc uh, you can right click on a file folder and say open git bash here and that will start you in the folder where you're at um, so I can look and get and um, do a couple things to analyze this directory. Um, but I see that here, if I open this folder, I have exactly the same um, structure. I had a few extra files that were um, also included that are not shown here, um, but the same three folders. And so I have a few things online that I don't have in this particular um, folder on my computer. So much like Dropbox where you can sync things online you have to actively choose to sync. Next, I want to show you that this is the main source code. So if I click the, the button for source, this is where it defaults to. The readme is whatever document that you have provided to give information. Um, usually I like to give some instructions about how do I get these files to my computer? How do I do this the very first time? How do I do it subsequent times? Sometimes as a reminder to myself and other times to students. The commits link tells me all of the history of times I have made any snapshots of these projects and posted on this Bitbucket repository. And what I want to point out is that um, some of them, so I say in this one, I have some nickname associated with each commit that tells me what I did that. It has a timestamp, a date, um, and it has who is the author. This was a solo project. If I click the actual commit message, I'm able to see what file or files are included here. And the green is what is new and the red is what is there from previous versions. I can view the differences this way where it's in line. I can also see a side by side difference, which is going to show me at each line in my code where are their variations from um, previous. So the red is what used to be there and the green is what is there now. And then I can see that nothing else was changed um, in the areas that are not highlighted. I don't frequently use the branches, pull requests, pipelines, deployment issues, downloads. Um, so the source and the commit are the main uh, features that I use regularly. And for basic use, those are appropriate. Um, there's also these three little dots that you can manage your notifications if you'd like to know when something new is posted here. You can also, if you are the owner, you can share the repository and you can change um, the settings. So um, I gave explicit permission to specific people in my class last year, um, but this one I believe is also a public repository. So that's where you can add um, users. Here, I can search for myself. It's going to tell me that I'm already my own teammate. I already have permissions. I don't need to have more permissions. And then the last thing I'll point out is that Git works best on plain text. 
text documents. So MATLAB and Python script. So here I've got um, uh, also LaTeX or um, HTML and Markdown documents. So this README is written in Markdown. You can, you can edit online and I usually do edit my README online because I can do the Markdown um, features. There's some different um, kind of help information for Markdown here and some formatting highlights, which is a nice editor. For the most part, I edit most of my files offline and post them here. And I have a PDF file here. And what you notice if you have a PDF is it will tell you that it is a binary file. You can't actually display it here and track the changes. The same is true for Word documents, PowerPoint presentations, Excel spreadsheets, um, other things like that. And so they become large and you can't see the changes and you just end up needing to download them. And so I don't think that it's useful to put those documents, those types of documents into the Bitbucket repositories on a frequent basis. Occasionally, maybe, but not frequently. So that concludes my brief overview for using um, Bitbucket for hosting repositories uh, for a solo project. You can also do this for shared projects where multiple people have permissions to read and write um, single, uh, in a single folder and share with each other.